Matte track transitions have to be one of my favorite additions to OBS in the last few years. If you're wondering what they look like, here. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? These transitions are fairly similar to the Stinger transitions with the main difference being the matte track ones don't require the transition to cover the entire screen. Unfortunately, this makes them a little more difficult to create and work with, but don't worry. In this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know and we also have some free matte track transitions as well. Roll that intro. What's going on guys? Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today I'm gonna to show you how cool matte track transitions are and how to use them in OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. Also, as a cool freebie, I've made over 70 matte track transitions that you can download today and they're all completely free. Check them out in the description down below. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at those. And if you wanna skip ahead to the tutorial part of this video, check the timestamps below for the Streamlabs and the regular OBS versions. All right, so now we're over at the computer and I'm gonna show you how to use matte track transitions inside of OBS. If you wanna know how to use it inside of Streamlabs, go ahead and check the timeline or check the description to jump to the correct chapter to see that. It's gonna be in this video as well. And it's very, very similar. So let's go ahead and take a look at the video files very quickly and then I'm gonna show you how to use them inside of OBS. And I wanna say that they do look a little bit different than Stinger transitions if you've ever used them before. And actually, let's go ahead and show you guys what one looks like. So it, if you've got it set to default inside of OBS, this is probably what you're seeing, just a hard cut. And for your viewers, you know, that's not that great. Now we do have the options for fades that look a little bit more clean than just a simple cut, but we also can have stuff as cool as this with matte track transitions. Isn't that cool how easy it is to make, you know, have two transition or have two scenes on the screen and the transition smoothly pushes you from one scene to the next. That is what's so cool about matte track transitions. And the best part is something we're gonna talk about in just a second. And that's the fact that you don't have to do a ton of configuration on your end because it's already set up inside of the video files for the matte track. And it's super cool. So I'm gonna briefly show you what one looks like. So let's go ahead and actually, we're not gonna do the fog because that one's a little bit more complicated to explain, but we're gonna select this orange one here. And yeah, we'll see, we'll look at this for just a second. So we've got essentially two files baked in or two video, uh, 1080p video files baked in side by side. Now you can also stack them. Um, that's something we'll talk about in just a second as well. But essentially what this does is one video file the left hand side in this case is telling OBS show this on screen right so it's saying show this graphic and this is actually transparent so the only thing you would see is this orange bar and what the right hand side is doing is it's telling you what scenes need to be put on screen and what locations so the black part of the screen is the scene that's currently active and the white scene is the one that you're moving to and if we just play this back you can actually kind of see uh, how it kind of moves across the screen and it looks like this might be trying to crash which is uh, a good reason to get out of that and let's actually show you guys how to add them in um, so now we're going to go ahead and add one in and it's actually very simple so if you've never messed with scene transitions before they are very easy don't feel uh, overwhelmed by them um, to add one in all you need to do is click on this little drop down right here and then we need to select the type that we're doing. So there's actually quite a few different types, but what we're gonna be using is Stinger. Now, matte track transitions are essentially Stinger transitions with more information on when to transition. And they do work a little bit different because they give us the ability to have multiple scenes on screen. And like I said, it sounds very complicated, but for the streamer, it's actually very easy. So we're gonna go ahead and name this fog. We're gonna use the fog transition because it's my favorite. And if you guys wanna see more transitions from us, free transitions, that is, um, we're not gonna make you guys pay for them or anything. They're all completely free. We've got 70 plus and you guys can download those today. But if you wanna see even more in the future, uh, if we can get this video to 500 likes, we'll make some more for you guys because we know how much you guys like transitions. So 
all you got to do first, and let me stop getting ahead of myself, is select the video file that you want to use. So you'll just browse your way to the OBS mat track transitions on your computer somewhere. And we're going to choose fog because fog is just my favorite. I, I really love the look of it. And we're going to go ahead and go with the light blue and click. Uh, we're not going to click OK. So I do want to talk about why mat track transitions are so nice, because with typical Stinger transitions, they cover the whole screen. And what you have to do is you have to transition immediately whenever the whole screen is covered. And if you don't transition when the whole screen is covered, then it looks choppy and you can see that transition um, happen and take place from one scene to the other or where it cuts. And it doesn't look smooth. It defeats the whole purpose. You might as well use a fade, in my opinion. Um, but with mat track transitions, since we have that left side that shows the graphic and the right side that shows um, and feeds information to OBS and tells it when to move from scene to scene, it eliminates that for us, which is really awesome. So we actually don't have to mess with the transition point time uh, or type or the transition point at all. We don't have to do any of that, which is super cool. The only thing we do have to click is the use a track mat. And we'll do that in just a second because I want to preview and show you what it looks like if you don't. It looks off completely off and so whenever we check that um it should just work and that is with our transitions now if somebody does this a little bit different um say you're purchasing these from somebody that makes transitions and does graphic design or you decide to make your own you might run into a problem of where yours doesn't look this smooth it doesn't look like it's right now one of two things could be causing that one those layers that i showed you on the right side they may be flopped um, they may have the screen completely white and then it transitions to a black one and to do that all you got to do is invert those matte colors now for us that's going to look a little weird so you can see we're on scene b right now it's going to transition back to scene b and then jump to scene a so to fix that <coughs> excuse me all you have to do is uncheck the invert matte colors and the other scenario you may run into is whoever designs um, your matte transitions may not put them side by side it actually supports being stacked on top of each other as well and to fix that all you have to do is change that to stacked instead of side by side so now that we've got this selected the way we want it use a track mat and side by side all we've got to do is click OK and then make sure it's selected over here under the scene transitions and then click the next scene and we can see we have a really smooth and clean transition of where it essentially fades from one to another um, in this really cool pattern and that's one of the reasons why this is my favorite and we also have the other one that kind of pushes across the screen so this is a really easy way to make your stream stand out because your transitions aren't dull anymore they're more dynamic and really involved so now let me go ahead and switch over to streamlabs obs and show you how to do it in there and if you guys don't care to see that because you only use OBS, then just jump to the next chapter past this one and you guys can continue with the video. So now we're inside of Streamlabs OBS and I want to show you how to use the mat track transitions. If you want to know how to do it inside of OBS, check the description or go ahead and check the chapters on the videos to go ahead and jump back to that. That way you can know how to specifically do it in there because it's the menus are just a hair difference, like not much, but to get to it slightly different. So let me go ahead and show you what it looks like inside of here as well. And as you can see, we do have mat track transitions working inside of Streamlabs OBS. So to do this is a little bit different. All you'd have to do is find the scene selection um, or just all of your scenes together right here on my screen. As you can see, it's in the middle. But if yours is not there, you can actually adjust your layout with a layout editor and just figure out which one has the uh, scene selector. And you just need to make sure that's in there. So mine's right there in the middle. Your layout may vary a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the editor and what we're going to do now is we're going to click the settings cog above the scene selector so we have scene one selected and we're just going to go right above this to the edit scenes transitions and to add a new one is as simple as clicking add transition so we're going to click that and i'm going to name this one tutorial and now we're going to select the type so in the exact same way in obs we are going to select the stinger transition now this is where it looks a little bit different because it almost looks like there's no information regarding mat track now there is one checkbox and whenever you click it it will give you more options 
But inside of here, at first, whenever I started looking at this a while back, I was just like, oh no, there's nothing in here for it. But no, there, there is. It's just a checkbox that gives you more settings. So first we're gonna go ahead and select the video file we wanna use, and that opened up on my other monitor. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I can't remember what color fog we went with. I'm gonna go with the light blue, because that's my favorite color. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And we don't have to worry about the transition points because once again, that's inside the mat track file. The right hand side of that file is gonna let us know um, using the black and the white mat track of when to switch to the next scene. And then our left side video is going to give us the options to have branding and color and assets and stuff show up on screen during that transition. So all we need to do now is click use a mat track. And that is pretty much all we have to do with the video files I have um, provided for you guys that are completely free. I mentioned this in the OBS version as well. If you guys really like having these free assets for you guys and you want to see more of these, <coughs> excuse me, in the future, then be sure to hit that like button because whenever we get to 500 likes on this video, we're going to go ahead and make you guys some more mat track transitions and hopefully some more that aren't as basic. And I also want to mention if you guys want to and you've messed with Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere before, um, go ahead and download this stuff because you can alter these as well and add your own branding to them if you would like. Um, but yeah, with that kind of spiel out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some things you may run into if you didn't watch the OBS version earlier in this video. So the way that our file works is the mat tracks are side or to the right side of the transition. And if you buy these transitions from somebody else at some point in time, like similar mat tracks, you may run into the problem of where that doesn't work. You could run into two problems actually. One is very easy to find and that is whenever you look at the video file, are the video files stacked on top of each other? Because they may be side by side or they may be stacked because it's essentially two 1080p videos right next to each other, whether that's left and right or up and down. So if they're stacked on top of each other, all you have to do is change it from same file stacked. And that's all you have to do and it's pretty easy. Now, if you know you've got that correct and the transition looks a little weird and there's an easy way to fix that. So if you look at it and on the matte track, the color of the screen is white on that track and it changes to black, then you need to invert the matte colors and you can just check that box there and that's all you have to do to get this up and running. So let's go ahead and click done and we have our tutorial transition. So we're gonna go ahead and select that dial and this is gonna make this the default global transition for this now. So any scene that we switch to now is going to use that transition. So let's go ahead and select scene two and we can see our transition is being used and it is that easy and that it's just to me it's just it's an easy way to make your stream stand out and make your transitions more dynamic and more entertaining for your viewers and for you guys it doesn't hardly take any work all you have to do is make sure you have the mat track transition throw it into obs select the right settings which for you may only be one checkbox if you're using ours but if you're using somebody else's it may be changing a few little settings to get it up and running but it's that easy if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Destroy that like button, get subscribed, and turn on notifications for future videos from How To Tech. Thank you for watching. This has been Chad, helping you take your tech to the next level, and I will see you in the next video. If you want to check out some of our other videos, you can do so right over there. And if you want to further support the channel, then think about becoming a YouTube member like these lovely people below. Members get early access to videos, badges, emotes, members only posts, and discounts on merch. Check out that link in the description down below.